This is the Honda Ridgeline, and I think it's one of the most interesting vehicles on the road. Uh, the interesting part's back there. Okay, uh, given how many millions of pickup trucks haunt America's roadways, the Ridgeline's bed might not seem noteworthy, and yet, in a space doomed to haul junk to the dump, Honda's crammed tons of ingenuity. Innovation number one is a dual action tailgate that flips down like you'd expect the tailgate to drop down, but also rotates out, kind of like a station wagon, giving you easy access to the bed and the in-bed trunk. That's right, there's an in-bed trunk, which offers a lockable storage space, and underneath his left shoulder, there's a drain plug, meaning you can also use it as a very large uh, ice chest or just somewhere to keep your British uh, cameraman when he gets all sweaty. Hello? Please, Micah, can I get out of the boot now? Honda's interpretation of a pickup offers lots of functional benefits, but there are also limitations. With its car-like unibody platform, the Ridgeline comes only as a crew cab with a 5-foot 4-inch bed. Period. For any other configuration, you'll need a traditional body-on-frame pickup truck. The Ridgeline's bed is also shallow with a high floor, facts that matter when loading a dirt bike or hauling loads of hay. Not that I've ever hauled loads of hay. Those caveats aside, the Ridgeline's composite bed is highly capable, boasting standard bed lights, eight 350-pound tie-down cleats, and a nearly 1,600-pound payload capacity. Just remember not to fill a gas can in it. Move inside, and the 60-40 split rear seats flip up to carry even more stuff, though a properly flat floor would be nice. Flip the seats down, and you can hide valuable gear underneath. With the seats in people-carrying mode, there's more than enough space for three adults with more than adequate head and legroom, facilitated by a flat foot space right here. But I will say that the rear seat back is a little vertical for my taste. Look and feel around the cabin, and it's clear the Ridgeline is an exceptionally refined mid-sized truck, as if the interior was nabbed from some thoughtfully crafted SUV. In fact, it was. Guess which one is the Honda Pilot, and which is the Honda Ridgeline? The Ridgeline doesn't just look like a Honda Pilot, it feels like a Honda Pilot. The materials, controls, and cabin noise all match expectations for a modern SUV, not a rugged and raw pickup truck. Core to that sense of refinement is a fully independent suspension that absorbs craptastic road imperfections with an ease unfathomable by traditional pickup trucks, with their live rear axles and their old-timey body-on-frame construction. Ha <laughs> ha! The Ridgeline also steers really well. If you care about ride and handling and you need an open space to carry your stuff, this is your truck. Basically, this side of an Australian ute, I can't think of a less truck-like truck than the Ridgeline. Powering all Ridgelines is a 3.5-liter V6 teamed with a six-speed automatic transmission providing agreeable shifts and stout acceleration. Front-wheel drive is standard, but before you cry sacrilege, note that the Ridgeline's fuel economy beats or exceeds the rest of the V6 midsize field. For added traction, the Ridgeline's all-wheel drive system offers dedicated snow, mud, and sand modes as indicated by these fun animations adjusting throttle, transmission, and torque distribution accordingly. The system also boasts torque vectoring abilities, letting it direct power to the outside rear wheel for improved cornering. Spring for all-wheel drive, and tow capacity increases from 3,500 to 5,000 pounds, though even at 5,000 pounds, the Ridgeline's max towing ability trails the competition. On the infotainment front, lower Ridgeline trims make do with a 5-inch LCD screen, while higher trims feature this sharp-looking, quick-reacting 8-inch touchscreen. I won't belabor my annoyance at the lack of a volume knob, but I will point out that the screen sure collects fingerprints. That aside, Bluetooth pairing is a snap, and the inclusion of Apple CarPlay and Android Auto mean I can quickly drown out tedious conversations with my favorite podcast. Did you see that new ah, 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 ah. Uh? Yeah. That's how it is. It is. <laughs> That's why I've been in friendship for over the years. That's one way to drown it out. So Among the Ridgeline's standard equipment list are active noise cancellation, 18-inch wheels, a backup camera, and a 200-watt seven-speaker audio system with a subwoofer, one USB port, and Bluetooth. And while push-button start does come standard, the base RT trim requires you to unlock the doors with the fob. 
Climbing the trim ladder adds features like passive entry, navigation, a power sliding rear window, an acoustic windshield, a 400 watt truck bed outlet, three zone climate control, power leather seats, heated front seats, and a 540 watt eight speaker audio system. One particularly nifty feature reserved for the priciest Ridgeline trims is an in-bed audio system. So now everybody at the home improvement store will know about your shameful smash mouth addiction. Somebody once told me the world is gonna roll me. I ain't a shit. Like its pilot cousin, the Honda Ridgeline, at least in the highest trims, includes modern driving aids like adaptive cruise control, forward collision warning, collision mitigation braking, lane keep assist, and blind spot monitoring with cross-traffic alert. Starting at slightly more than $30,000, the Ridgeline is priced competitively versus comparable V6 crew cab versions of the Toyota Tacoma, Chevy Colorado, and GMC Canyon. If you don't mind a notable drop in sophistication and fuel economy, the Nissan Frontier can be had with a V6 and four doors for less than $26,000. Well-established solutions often work just fine, but Honda has a rich tradition of questioning the fundamentals. When you apply that innovative spirit to something like a pickup truck, the result is trucky utility minus the uncivilized inefficiencies. No, the Honda Ridgeline is not going to work for all truck buyers, but I'm guessing it's more than enough truck for most. Help. Anyone? Micah, let me out of the boot, please. I'm lonely.